Hello and uh, welcome to Beacon Pines, where we are about to get a notification for a strange noise or sound or something. Any moment now. An eerie electronic sound echoed from Luca's bedroom. There we go. Hello? Is anyone there? Let's go take a look. It's the walkie-talkie. Hello? Rolo, is that you? Over? Huh. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Oh, somebody's at the door. Oh, hey, Roxy. If this is about me, uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday, is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? N no, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weepwood, and then it was late, and we went home. Weepwood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rollo. Where are you? All right, let's go check the library. I mean, Granny did tell us to not leave the house, but this is an emergency, so we're just gonna go. Hey Bert, have you seen Rolo? Nope. Though I've mostly been talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said that he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. Howdy, Luca. Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. 
You could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's no problem. The important thing is, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. We're all a part of something special, Luca. And it all starts... Right here in Beacon Pines. I got it. Toby looked up from the clipboard excitedly. That's right. So how about you start by telling me? Look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Aww, you joker. We're all a part of this together. You'll let us know when you're free to answer a few questions. Oh, let's go ask him. Oh. Okay. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she'll be here, then she'll be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around. Doing nothing. And waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around. Doing nothing. And getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Yeah, well, good intentions don't qualify as legal tender. <laughs> Urgh, my parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the, other, where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Weep Wood. Our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess... Right, Fitz and I will check Weepwood. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. What's this about a missing child? I must stress that the situation is completely under control. It just all seems so terrible. And you're sure there's nothing we can do to help? Nonsense, young, young Mr. Cotter will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. You just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging. Oh yes, Miss Valentine has been more than accommodating. We were just telling our daughter Beck that... Now, where did she run off to? His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean, vanished? That's impossible. 
Oh my. It doesn't even see the danger he's in. That book sure has a weird way of, uh, of, um, the events coinciding with the, uh, events in Luca's life. Hey, Dawn. Is it true about Rollo? Yeah, he didn't come home last night. I wonder if it's connected. Connected to what? I was checking in on reports about increased activity around town. What sort of activity? Windowless trucks, mechanical noises, strange lights. Your typical shady stuff. Who would be doing all that and why? Well, I have a few leads. The Valentine family is always suspicious. Perennial Harvest certainly has the resources. Do you have any idea where Rolo could be? The best place to start looking is where the trail went cold. Where did you see him last? We were in Weepwood. Right by Valentine's Fertilizer. I'll check out Weepwood when my shift ends. I do my best work at night. Alright. Ah, cafe still not open. Hey Griffin, has Rollo been by? Haven't seen him all day. I'm sure he'll show up safe and sound. And when he does, tell him there's a strawberry chocolate double scoop waiting for him. On the house. He'll like that. I mean, anybody would. Hey, Yizun. History Museum. It's laughable, really. Did you happen to see Rolo in there? No, just a shadow of a family. Clinging on to a town, clinging on to the past. Feel free to check for yourself. But don't expect to have your mind blown. Well, let's check. Sharper Valentine, a celebration of excellence. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one Sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck. A scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. 
Together we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Capital Rubberman's Fund. That was... unhelpful. Alright, now to the library. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Kato. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Ahem. Oh, hey, Luca. You snuck up on me. Good book? Dunno. Just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out, bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy. That's interesting, but... You haven't seen Rollo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first to know. Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Did Rolo come by? No? I was actually surprised. He's usually here early on days when a new issue drops. Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by... Tell him to meet me, um, you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Ooh. Roger that, space cadet. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular Biology and the Chemistry of Mitosis. Boring. Mycological Phosphorescence. Ugh. More like... My complete loss of interest. the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. A peek behind the curtain. The Methods and Ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu, one of the greatest acting minds of our time, by Patrick C. Montesquieu. Oof.
the entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser, revered spin-offs. Okay, that's it. Now what? Oh yeah, maybe we should go to the treehouse? What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep, not by choice. Beck's family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rollo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like missing missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Oh yeah, his mom. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yeah, well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kinda like me and Rollo. I guess Rollo's my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. So... I guess, should we retrace our steps or something? Go back here? Oh hey, we could ask... Oh. Hey Luca, it looks like a path goes this way. Aww, we can't ask the uh, bog person. Ah, Well... Lost opportunity. Dang, they boarded up the way in. Well, let's follow the path. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick. 
Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey, Dish, look what the cat dragged in. Yup. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. No, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. She looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we have been properly introduced. Iggy is the name. This is my compa compatriot, Tish. Yep. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once, on account of your being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... You. Has he even told you that his parents... Parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true. They got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't talk about my family. Ha <laughs> ha Well, look who's grown a backbone now that a girl's around. First, his pops croaked. Then, his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought, Um... Tickle? Well, time to bust out the tickles. Hey, Tish. Wanna see something cool? Yup. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. What the? Tish? Is she tickling you? Yup. Hi, yup. Hi, yup. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Hi, yup. Hi, yup. Hi, yup. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Oh yeah. 
I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Whoa. Uh oh. What a little creep. Uh, Beck? I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh God. Chapter four, the best policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolla was his primary concern. Yeah, we gotta find Rolo. Can we? We probably can't go that way, right? Oh. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with grey hair just run past us in, in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rollo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. R Rolo and I weren't just playing in Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in a dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just... wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I want to help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse that you two like to play in. Wait there, in case Rollo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now, scoot. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? 
Things have been strange around here, leading up to the festival. My dad is, has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Alright, I guess we're going to the treehouse. But... We'll do that in the next episode. And, uh, hopefully... Rolo shows up. In any case... Thank you so much for spending time with me here on the Mellow. It was lovely to have you. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you next time.